Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the regular school committee meeting to order. Today is June 8th, 2021, and we are starting our meeting today at 7.01. Uh, we are being televised, as always, on PBD Access TV. In real time, public participation can be addressed to the public school uh, PBD school committee utilizing Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. The application will allow users to view the meeting and make a comment during public participation. And as always, just please raise your hand and uh, Dr. Vidal and I will bring you into the meeting. Uh, we are also, the minutes from the meeting are being uh, taken by our recording secretary, Leanna Harris. I'd like to start off the meeting with a call to order. First is a moment, a moment of silence and I wanted to turn it over to our school committee member, Joe Amico, uh, for a um, dedication. Thank you, through, uh, Mayor, through the chair. If we could, um, during our moment of silence, remember um, Officer Emanuel Familia from the Worcester Police Department, um, who made the ultimate sacrifice. Um, Officer Familia jumped into a pond to try to save a teenager who was drowning. Uh, both of them did not make it and died. So I just wanted to keep he and the uh, city of Worcester and his whole family and of the teenagers in our thoughts and prayers. Also, uh, in Braintree, Mass, uh, two police officers were injured in a shooting, and their partner, K-9 Kit, was, um, was killed as well in the, uh, in the shooting. So if we can keep them in our prayers as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amico. So please join me in a mo moment of silence, and then we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, uh, we have a couple of meeting minutes uh, for approval. First one is the May 25th, 2021 budget meeting minutes. Let's open that up to the school committee. Motion to accept and approve the May 25th, 2021 uh, budget meeting minutes. Second. We've heard the motion by Mrs. Carpenter to approve the minutes of the budget meeting of May 25th, 2021. That motion was seconded by Mr. Arnotis. Any questions? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Griffin Dunn? Yes. And Mr. Notice? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, also turn to you, Mrs. Carpenter, for the minutes of the regular school committee meeting. I'd like to make a motion to accept and approve the regular school committee meeting minutes of May 25th, 2021. Second. Heard the motion by Mrs. Carpenter for approval of the May 25th, 2021 regular school committee meeting. Uh, seconded by Mr. Hockman. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Griffin Dunn? Yes. And Mr. Notis? Yes. Okay, thank you. Approval of bills, item number three. We have a couple of warrants. Mrs. Carpenter, I'll turn it to you. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant number 4782 dated June 8th, 2021, in the amount of $106,494.94, subject to audit. Second. Okay, you've heard the motion for approval of warrant number 4782. Motion was made by Mrs. Carpenter, seconded by Mr. Olympio. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hockman. Yes. Mr. Olympio. Yes. yes. Mr. Amico. Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Mrs. Griffin Dunn. Yes. And Mr. Notice. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant number four seven. I'm sorry, I have a conflict on my numbers, warrant numbers on my paper. I have two different papers. Yeah, I have four seven eight four on my agenda, but um, something different in the packet. So I'll do four seven eight four, dated June eighth, twenty twenty one, in the amount of six hundred sixty one thousand twenty dollars and zero. Uh, in one cent, subject to audit. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Carpenter, and you're right, it is a different number. Um, we'll clarify that, but the motion was made by Mrs. Carpenter, seconded by Mr. Olympio for approval of warrant number 4784. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? 
Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Griffin Dunn? Yes. And Mr. Notis? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item, continued business. We do have the Welch School MSBA project. Mrs. Dunn, I'll turn to you for any update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Welch School has some exciting news. On Monday, June 14th at 6 p.m., we will be hosting uh, community meeting number three. Everyone should be receiving an invitation in the mail and by email, and we're getting the word out to the public. We hope a lot of people will join us to watch that. It's going to be broadcast by PATV. It will be available by um, Zoom as well. And uh, a lot of really exciting pieces of the puzzle are coming together, and people will be able to see that and learn more about the project. Also, I'm really happy to announce that we will have a web page for the Welch School project, and that will be announced at that meeting. The address will be there, will be available. We're going to have a link on the school department webpage, and people will really be able to follow along with the project as we progress, and they'll be able to see all kinds of information online uh, to keep up with all of the changes that are occurring. So um, the next step for us, in addition to the month, the weekly meetings, the monthly meetings, the daily meetings. Um, I am going to be working with you to schedule a joint meeting of the city council and school committee so that you folks will all be able to ask questions directly to the team that's working on this project, the architects, the owners, uh, project manager, and our construction manager. So that will be coming soon, and um, I'll get that date to everyone as soon as it's confirmed. So thank you. That's a great idea. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn, for your work. Okay, superintendent's report. Dr. Vidal, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have a brief report tonight. Okay, so we have four items on the agenda. We have some recognition, uh, an update on next year's uh, transportation fees. Uh, we have an update on the ap application for our single district virtual school, and then a quick recap um, of for the end of the year. So, I'd like to begin with a little bit of recognition for a couple of our uh, educators and, and our teams. Each year there's uh, an annual award for excellent in energy and environmental education. And so we received two awards, um, which will be in uh, the form of donations. And when we receive those donations, we'll bring it to the committee and, and, and do a formal vote. Uh, but we were very excited towards the end of the year and wanted to recognize that the Higgins Middle School um, had the Barons. Miss Barons is a grade seven teacher and her grade seven outdoor learning students uh, did a water quality program and uh, they want to enhance that program and so they applied and they won an award for it and, and part of the award through the Massachusetts Environmental Trust is a $250 donation so that they can do the program next year and even enhance it. And so they go outside and they, they do um, some things on the Higgins grounds around the wetland and, and, and things like that. So that's very exciting. And then the Brown Elementary School, their project Brown School Goes Greener, um, and they call themselves the Environmental Eagles Coordinators. Uh, w they received an award as well, uh, and they've been doing some work behind the Brown School. Uh, and so again, the Massachusetts Environmental Trust uh, was awarded them with a $350 donation so they can continue their project. So very, very happy for uh, the Higgins Middle School and the Brown Elementary School wanted to give them some recognition tonight. Okay, moving on. Um, so next year we are returning to full in-person learning and we'll have full capacity on our transportation. Um, so what we'd like to do is just bring this to the community's attention. Um, we'll go back to uh, full round trip uh, transportation for anyone uh, that wants it. There will be a fee if you're outside of um, the, the drop-off zones and so it will be going back to the previous fees that were approved by the school committee of $350 per student for a round trip with a $650 family max or a one-way fee of $225 per student and a $450 max. So as long as, uh, so this is consistent with what was approved last year. So as long as there's no objections, uh, the transportation department would like to get those applications out consistent with what we've done uh, in previous years. We'll get those out starting tomorrow if there are no um, objections from the committee and we'll be able to communicate that with our families. And I think a lot of people will be happy to know that we'll be running full transportation. Uh, I know that it was qu quite a burden on people with the, the limited uh, capacity that we had. So we're looking to, to really ramp that up. So no objections there. Thank you, Dr. Vidala. Uh, open it up, Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Vidala. 
I would just like to make sure we bring it to folks' attention. This application requests that people fill it out, even if they're not looking for transportation, just so we can figure out who is going to be um, attending. So uh, it's important. It just says, regardless of your decision, a response from all parents is necessary for proper planning. So just so people know when this comes home, please submit it. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Any other comments or questions at this point? Mr. Hockman? Yeah, tangentially related. Um, you know, I think your next portion of your report, Dr. Vidal, is going to be about the PBD prep. Um, and I, I just want to, after we get transportation applications in and we see how many students are going to utilize transportation, we may see a reduction in number of buses um, with the number of kids going to prep. So I just wanted to put that out there on the radar of uh, your staff so that we can perhaps look at that and see how that may impact um, costs. And if we need to adjust this rate at some point as a result of that, we may be able to do that. Thank you, Mr. Hockman. I think it's important to get th it out this early, and we wanted to do it before school gets out so that some of the communication can be reinforced through uh, the schools. A lot of times when the classroom teacher or the school principal sends out a message, it gets a little bit more traction, a little bit more attention than when it comes from, from central office or from the transportation office. And again, the, the next uh, item is an update on the single district virtual school application. Um, so our personalized remote education program, and I'll turn this over to Dr. Lord. Thanks, Dr. Vidala. Um, this has been a wonderful little project for the last uh, couple of months. And I first want to thank the design team. There's been 20 people, uh, students, teachers, administrators, uh, leaders, some uh, people that are listening here, no doubt, that have been involved in this project. And they've been a wonderful voice, and I've been very lucky to be able to catalyze some of those conversations over the last couple of months to get to where we are today. Um, we got feedback from the Department of Education um, last Friday based on our initial application. Um, it, uh, the language in that next bullet, the proposal substantially addressed the requirements of a single district virtual school. That's the first sentence. They did have 10 recommendations uh, for us. The um, recommendations are already embedded in the student teacher family compact, very much like a student handbook, but for virtual learning. Uh, they haven't seen that yet. They'll be sending that along as a final application. They also have not seen our, um, our informational video that illustrates what this is all about, why we're doing it, how it can be helpful for some students. And um, once I see that, I think we will meet all those recommendations. Um, it starts with a uh, vote with the school committee to approve our final application. And um, if anybody have any questions about this, um, we're happy to fill in any blanks. It's been pretty out there for the last couple of weeks, couple of months, I know. Yeah, any questions for Dr. Lord at this point on this item? Mr. Nico? Thank you, Crew Chair, Dr. Lord. Thank you for this. Um, just a couple of items um, on this. Do we have a, um, do these students have a lunch program um, embedded in this, if, if that's possible? They can. It'll be very similar to the one we have now where they okay. uh, drive by and pick up. Yeah. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Sure. Any other questions? Mrs. Carpenter? Thank you, through the Chair, Dr. Lord. Um, do you have uh, an interested number? Do you have any idea of what the class size looks like? We're taking applications right now. Um, we are up at to 70 something as of today. Uh, I'm not sure where that's going to land. Um, we did a survey in March. We had about 540 people initially show an interest in this. And then uh, we did a, a secondary pre registration with 140 people. Um, I talked to several parents. They, they didn't understand that we need a, a document that says, I really want to do this. Uh, and that document's been out um, in the public for a week or so now, and people are filling that document in. It says I'd like to transfer my student from the Higgins to PBD prep or the high school to PBD prep. It's very much like moving up from one school to another school. Imagine it's like creating another building. Like we just we just built another building, and people are have an interest in going to it. So they, they transfer to it, and they become part of that entity. We'll get a separate number, um, like all the other schools in the city, and we'll be accountable just like any other school system. It just won't be brick and mortar, it'll be a virtual one. Thank you, Mrs. Carpenter. Any other questions? Mrs. Dunn? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know up on the screen it says there's a YouTube video and we were lucky we saw a preview of it before the meeting. Could we play that now for, whoop, for people at home? Um, it was really very so. nice. Yeah, I was gonna suggest that uh, maybe we go through uh, some more of the remaining items and then go back 
to the video because um, I know there's going to be an executive session. I think that we need to discuss. So I was just thinking maybe during executive session, the video could be played. That's a good idea. Is that okay? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Any other questions, though, for Dr. Lord at, at this point, Mr. Arnotis? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to Dr. Lord, thank you, Dr. Lord, and your team for putting this together for sure. us. You know, I'm, I'm optimistic about this. I, I think it's a great idea, and I know people are going to watch the video, so um, if you can't watch it after this, certainly please go and, and check it out. Just very briefly, can you give folks an idea who, you know, who are watching right now what the day-to-day -day might look like for a student oh, sure. if yep. through this, just so we have some uh, sense for folks who might be interested? Yep. Uh, again, I want to uh, get a, a team, a staff, teachers together to help flesh some of the details out. But the way it looks now is um, I'll be running Pledge of Allegiance, Moment of Silence, at 825 in the morning uh, for everybody, K-12, the entire district. Very similar to the way the Brown School does it right now. They involve a student. Uh, they do the Pledge of Allegiance, and we'll have some morning announcements. Um, the academic day will start at 830 for everybody, K-12. The um, elementary students, K through 5, they will be linked structurally to the center school because the center school specialist teachers have a hole in their schedule where they could pick up a, a kindergarten group of remote kids or a first grade group of remote kids. So the way the schedule is set up for those specialists at the elementary, there'll be a 40 minute specialist time frame, just like they have right now for art, music, PE, health, those specialists each day, a different one a week. And uh, the center school teachers will be doing one remote class, um, probably one per day, maybe three per week. Um, it depends on how the numbers shake out. Um, the academic day for the elementary students will end at 2.30. Uh, that will give students time to get up to the brick and mortar buildings if they want to participate in an after school activity, uh, fifth grade basketball or some of the other activities like that. The uh, middle and high school will act similarly, start at 8.30. They'll have their academic classes initially, English, Math, Science, Social Studies. We're currently looking at for roughly an hour for each of the academic cores. Um, those will be synchronous time, uh, begin at 8.30, it'll end at 12.30. Uh, the, the middle school and elementary, uh, middle school and high school kids go to lunch at 12:30 for half an hour, and then our homeroom teachers are available for them to do the ingenuity piece. Um, we are uh, planning a little ingenuity training with the PLA teachers who have been using ingenuity for almost 10 years now. Very proficient with it. Uh, we're going to do that next week, so the the teachers understand how to support the ingenuity process. And there's, you know, so it, look, it looks like the high school program of studies, and the kids will be able to pick classes very similar to the ones they got out of the program of studies at the high school and the um, the uh, middle school kids will pick two electives to work on for that last part of the day and the, um, the high school kids will pick three the credits will be matched up just like it's matched up for graduation credits for the high school students the the timing for middle and high for at least the synchronous part of the teachers working with it will be about 145 and that'll give high school and middle school students time to get back to the buildings to be participating in things that are going after school any one of the clubs um, Anyway, that's where it is right now. The uh, Edgenuity program monitors time on learning for the students. They'll be needing to monitor, they'll be needing to put in between 60 and 90 minutes per day on Edgenuity in their electives so that we can make that five and a half hour requirement for the high school and the uh, five hour requirement for the middle and elementary. Is that enough? <laughs> there it is. Yeah, that's helpful, thank you. Sure. Mr. Hockman. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and through you to Dr. Lord, thank you for presentation, and I do hope people stay to watch the video afterwards. It was, um, it did provide a lot of information and was done very, very well. Uh, actually, there was a rumor out there that you were awarded or nominated for an Academy Award. <laughs> Not quite sure. Uh, either that or the Cannes Film Festival was looking for, uh, anyway. Uh. <laughs> uh, no, ser uh, seriously, this is a serious subject, and uh, I do have, you know, we've talked uh, off and on uh, camera before. I do have some concerns regarding this, and some of them revolve um, around social and emotional issues. And, you know, we just uh, voted on a budget um, that we've, we're going to put in front of the city council a week from Thursday that has a lot of enhancement when it comes to um, mental health and, and aspects of that. Are we going to have a school adjustment counselor that has some dedicated time to the students that are in the... Um, yeah, as the enrollment shakes out, there's going to be, you know, uh, uh, we do this every year, uh, connect liaisons to students who need extra support. There's about 10 or 12 students who have IEPs that have currently um, become part of the program. And we'll take a look and get our arms around each kid individually. If that need is there, then we'll reach out and make that opportunity available for that student. 
Yeah, no, and, and thank you. I, I suspected that. I'm sure that you've considered that. And I just wanted everyone out there to hear that too. That sure. You know, every student that's going to be within this program is um, going to have their IEP honored as required to by law. Mm -hmm. They're going to have uh, other than academic issues addressed as we do fairly, very well, extremely well here in Peabody. Uh, so it, we, we just need to kind of identify how many and who and then figure out the support pieces on that. Exactly, afterwards. I've been maintaining conversations with um, uh, Ms. Chioda and the uh, team of special educators that are working with the students just to make sure they're aware of the families that are interested in doing this. And as soon as we find out all the details, we will meet with those IEP teams and establish goals that would be appropriate for the students that are in that setting and meet their needs accordingly. Yeah, no, like I said, I'm, 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 I was confident that you considered that and I just wanted everyone else to hear about yeah. it. And and if necessary, we, we might need to drag uh, Neil Hagstrom back into the district to show up at people's <laughs> doors. That would be great. <laughs> Co coach, coach would, uh, I think he'd relish that. But in any event, thank you very much. Sure. I think that guy's traveling the world right now enjoying Oh, life. he is, he is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Ackman, good questions. Okay, so, so if, there's, if there's no objection, I just was thinking that that might be a way to do it. I know we have some other business to cover and we can put the video on after. Okay, excellent. So. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lloyd, that was excellent. And uh, we did receive that feedback from the department and there were 13 school districts that applied for the uh, a single district virtual school. They identified four that substantially met their requirements and wanted to share those applications with the other nine applicants. And so we agreed, we were one of the four, um, that they identified that ours was sort of a model application to be able to provide it out. And we're going to share with the other four people just to kind of uh, take a look at them and see if we can update any of the language that is in there and, and, and enhance it. So it was, it was really nice to see that they identified ours as one of the exemplar uh, applications. And so um, they did ask for a motion from the school committee. So we're just asking to support the application for the single district virtual school pending the approval. Um, and you know, I, I think it's this, this language at least provides you with the opportunity to say that you're, you're supporting the application but it's not fully approved until we, until we get the approval from, from DESE, uh, which we would bring back to you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Vidala. Let's open that up. Um, Mr. Arnotis? Sure, I'll make the motion to follow the recommendation of the superintendent and support the district application for a single district virtual school pending approval from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Second. Okay. Thank you, you've heard the motion by Mr. Arnotis, seconded by Mrs. Dunn. Any comments on the motion, Mr. Hockman? Yes. Um, We've, we've discussed this for quite some time and, um, and we've been provided a, a great amount of detail as far as the application process and what the structure of the school looks like. And we talked about doing this as a pilot. And I'd prefer to make this motion to follow the recommendation of the superintendent and support the district application uh, you know, as a, a pilot. And I think we committed, to, uh, we've talked about one or two years. I think maybe two years we committed to. Um, but in either event, I'd like to, at least have some sunset on this and revisit it at some point. I, I, I'd like to, yeah, do it for one year and then revisit it again next spring, see how things are going, who's enrolled and um, all those things, if that's, if Mr. Arnotis is willing to amend his motion. Well, I'd like to hear what my colleagues have to say. I'm fine with making, you know, an amend to have a sunset on this. I'm wondering if perhaps two years may be best to try it out for rather than just a single year, especially as we're coming out of COVID and just starting things here. So I would be more comfortable if we put two years if we're gonna make that language change, but I'm happy to hear what anyone else has to say on that as well. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. So yeah, why don't we open that up for discussion, uh, point raised by Mr. Hockman. Uh, any thoughts or comments? Uh, this is done. I have a couple of questions. First. I know you have, if, if approved, you have to apply to get a, um, a number as, as a school. Um, would that, the fact that it's a pilot program affect the ability to get that kind of a number on the application when you, when you apply for a program in that fashion? So I'm not sure if, if it would affect our ability to do so. I do know that at any time we could we could pull the plug on this two years down the road if, you know, similar to taking a school offline. So we are applying to get the school number that's part of this process uh, so that it can be implemented um, at any point if 
it's not sustainable, similar to uh, if you had to combine schools one year because of low enrollment or things like that, you have the authority as a school committee to, to, to bring that up. Um, and so, you know, I think um, this process of applying is endorsing the application to do this for, and we can even say to do it for the next school year, uh, and then it can be renewable or it can be a vote by the school committee. Um, so I think the language is important with how we word it. Um, if maybe we say for the 2021-2022 school year, it, it gives you the authority as a school committee to, to come back to it, but it also doesn't say to DESE that we're only looking at this for one year only. So I mean, I think, you know, I think the committee is full of people who are good at wordsmithing. So um, you know, we'd, ha we'd be happy around that, but maybe say the application for the 2021-22 the school year um, might be helpful. I'll be honest, the reason I ask is because my concern is could the word pilot jeopardize the ability to get that number and to get the, the final approval from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education? That's, that's really what I'm worried about. Um, we always maintain the control no matter, no matter what. So, I mean, we can revisit it at the end of the year, which we would do anyway. We're getting a, we're getting a recap of this year the whole district in about five minutes. So we would we would be able to get that and see how it is going forward. But I I just worry that if they hear that word pilot, that they may hesitate thinking that we're not committed to a full robust program um, of any length of time. And I could be wrong, I don't know, but I, that's that's really my biggest concern. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Olympio. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Ms. Dunn. That makes me a little nervous with that pilot language, but I would be comfortable with Dr. Vidal's uh, suggestion that we approve it for fiscal year 2020, you know, calendar year, uh, not calendar year, but school year 2021 and 2022, so we can revisit it next year. That's just my two cents. Thank you, Mr. Olympio. Mr. Amico? Thank you for the chair. I agree with Mr. Olympio and Ms. Dunn, and, and thank you, Mr. Hawkins, for bringing that up. Uh, and, and I do think that if we just put in that 2021, 2022 in there, um, the, you know, everything is piloted, you know, in, in a sense, right? We, you know, next year at this time, we'll be talking budget again, and so we can, we can make adjustments if, if we want to. So I would be okay with the, having the 2021, 2022 in there and then uh, and then revisit it next year. Okay. Mr. I notice um, you're comfortable making the amendment. Answer. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Okay, so we, uh, we have the amended uh, amended motion with that language to include the school year 21-22. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Okay, roll call vote please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Griffin Dunn? Yes. And Mr. Onotis? Yes. Okay, thank you. And uh, we'll go back to the report, Dr. Vidala. Excellent. So the last item is uh, just an end of the year recap. And this is just a very big, broad brush of, of, of sort of where we are. Uh, Dr. Lord and I had a, a leadership meeting today with all of our principals, assistant principals, uh, curriculum directors, and, and, and all of our administrators. And really, there's a lot to celebrate this year. Uh, really coming out of the, the pandemic, uh, we had some struggles uh, at the beginning of the year. And you know, I think people have really exceeded our expectations. And as we start to look at the, the data that we've collected, uh, we really thoughtfully tried to collect data at the beginning of the year, uh, especially at the elementary level, to assess the learning loss and then uh, really take a look at, at where they are. So this first, um, this first visual that you have up here compares 2019-20 to 2020-21. And you'll see that in ELA, this is all of our elementary schools combined. Um, we, we were right around here, 37% um, maximizing the achievement and went up to about 39%. And then you see this big drop, we didn't assess the students in the fall. Um, when we came back, we had our school improvement plans and we, and we were really just below 34%. So we had seen the learning loss and we said, we're showing these and, and our principals came before this committee and said, these numbers are tough. 
and, and it's hard for us to say this, but we wanted to say this is where we are, and when we come back to you in June with improvement, we're going to show that teachers do matter. And so you'll see that we jumped way up to 38%, and then over 39, almost 40%, um, exceeding where we were last fall before the pandemic, uh, last winter before the pandemic started. So we still have a lot of work to do, but I think it shows that you know teachers matter and the work that they have done, the kids have been learning. We've seen a huge spike in the reading levels from the beginning of the school year after last spring. And uh, I, I just can't tell you how proud I am. I'm, I'm meeting with the principals for their end of the year meetings and they just uh, are really happy about the amount of growth that their kids have had. Um, we also have some charts here. This is our mathematics, uh, ELA and mathematics. This is growth. We don't, this is the first year we gave the STAR uh, mathematics test. So we don't have the historical data, um, but you can see high growth, we had 35% of kids showing high growth, 29.1% showing typical growth, and then 35% showing low growth. Now, that low growth number uh, is still showing growth, and so that's the kids that, that, we're, that we're really looking at. And so our district overall average was 65% in ELA and 68% in math. So typical growth is between 40 and 60%, and our average is 65 and 68. So um, you know, we've really seen excellent growth uh, the kids are really learning. We still have a lot of work to do, uh, which we're, we're going to really hit home uh, next year a, a, as we come in. But we really want to celebrate the end of the year, what, what they've been doing. And so the student growth percentile here, um, anything between 40 and 60 is considered average growth. Anything above 60 is above average growth. And so we set our target at 65 because we want to exceed above average growth. And you'll notice that in uh, this is the star reading on the left. All of our grades were above the 65, except for third and fourth grade, which were still above 60. Um, and so kindergarten showed 80% growth this year in reading. And then in math, our second grade was our biggest gainers, 78 point, uh, 72.8%. And then all of our other grades were above 65% growth in mathematics. So uh, we didn't want to have MCAS this year, but we're certainly excited to see the growth of our kids uh, because we think that our commitment to the hybrid model from the beginning and our aggressive approach at in-person learning has really set our kids up um, to be successful. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, in the middle school, we never had star reading or star math, so we gave the first benchmark this year um, in the spring to see where they are. And 44% of the kids were above the benchmark in reading, and in math we had 52.7. So again, this is, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders who have never taken this test before, it's a rigorous test. Uh, you know, these numbers are significantly higher um, than the benchmark numbers that we saw previously. So we're definitely encouraged at the learning that was going on here at the Higgins, and now we're committed to having this data point that we can use to continue to grow our kids as we move forward. So really happy with the work at the Higgins. Um, they've increased the, you know, I remember when uh, Mr. Busey came in to do his school improvement plan, they were looking at different pathways to get kids into advanced mathematics classes and really just opening up the door so it's not just based on teacher recommendation, uh, but now kids can take an, another course um, and, and try to accelerate their learning. So if they're in just standard grade six math, there's still a pathway to get to algebra as eighth graders and, 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 to, and to jump a lane. And so they've really worked on that and uh, they've had more kids in their honor society this year uh, than they have in previous years. So the Higgins is doing a great job as well. And then I'd like to end off with, with the high school. Nearly 350 out of the 360 seniors were able to graduate and walk and participate in the graduation. Uh, it was really great over the weekend to see um, all the families, the kids on the field, and all the families in the stands. Um, they were fighting the heat, but it was really impressive. Uh, so many kids took credit recovery, and, and despite this challenging year, they were able to complete that. The small handful of kids that um, were not able to meet those expectations, uh, we have, uh, we mentioned last time, uh, last meeting, that uh, Mr. Bedard over at the PLA is running a seniors only court credit recovery to make sure that we get those kids their, their diplomas by the end of the summer. So they were all included in the program because we, we're confident that we're going to work with them and have them be 2021 graduates of Peabody High School. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention about the high school is there's been a lot of talk over the past you know, three principals in three years, a lot of change, a lot of, a lot of challenges at the high school. And so uh, we have 
tried to dig deep into the climate and the culture of the high school, and we're committed to working uh, with our partners to do that. We, we brought in Teachers 21 um, to help us to examine that. So I'm excited to say that the student survey will be conducted on June 14th and 15th. We'll be surveying the students on the climate and culture of the high school. Staff next week from the 14th to the 17th will have some time carved out, and then we're going to uh, reach out to families in the community in summer of 2021 uh, to really talk about you know what what they experience as the culture and the climate at the high school so a lot of good things happening here uh, we want to take the information and really try to build on it and grow as, as best we can so with that that concludes the superintendent's report I'll, I'll turn it over to you I'm sure that some people have some wonderful things to say about the graduation ceremony mr. mayor thank you dr. Vidala we'll open that up any questions comments on uh, any of dr. Vidala's report this is done I'd just like to request if we could, could we have copies of those slides? They were really, really good. I'd like to be able to take a look at them again. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, any any of the slides for the meeting. Actually, I should have asked after our last meeting too, if we could just get those, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, that was a lot of great information. It'd be great to have that. Mr. Miko. Through the chair. Uh, Dr. Fidali, can we also have that um, the prep video on our website as well? Thank you. Okay, terrific. Public participation. Is uh, anyone uh, lined up that would like to speak, Dr. Vidala? We do have three attendees. I'm not seeing any hands raised. So I think we can move on to the next agenda item. Okay. We do not have any written communications today, so we'll go right to subcommittee reports. And let's start out education subcommittee. Mr. Amico? Nothing to report, thank you. Thank you. Finance, Mrs. Carpenter? Nothing to report. All right, school safety. Mm. Nothing Olympia. to report. Athletics and wellness. Nothing Finance. to report at the moment, but I will be getting a meeting date booked, um, if not on the day of our meeting in two weeks, sometime shortly after that. So we'll get something together for the calendar. Great, thank you. Quality and standards, Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this evening, the quality and standards subcommittee met prior to this current meeting. The topic of our uh, meeting, the agenda item, was the discussion about a memorial at the South Memorial School. A request was sent in by the South School Sunshine Committee. Uh, Jennifer D'Amato, Lisa Valentine, Amy Galley, Jenna Gates, Tori Broughton, and Doreen Blaisdell. In their request, which went to Mr. Higgins and the um, school council at the South, was requesting a to plant a small flowering tree in memory of Joanne Pantapas, the recently deceased director of Pastor Cervantes Preschool. And if approved, the tree would be planted in an open space right outside of the Pastor's entrance. And Jeff Butt of Fairways Landscape and Construction is going to assist with planting the tree and regrading a small area, adding soil mulch and a cobblestone edging. The request was made because they'd like to share the memory of their dear friend and colleague with all of the Paso Savant and South School families. The subcommittee discussed this and um, we also know that Dr. Vidala had spoken with appropriate personnel and I actually I'd like to let Dr. Vidala address that um, as far as uh, specifics of the project. Thank you Mrs. Dunn. Uh, so I did speak with the facilities group. Um, Jim Hafey and his facilities team had some recommendations for this committee. Uh, they, they met with him and identified the type of tree that would be planted to make sure that it was appropriate size and how it would grow that wouldn't encroach on the school or, um, or, or the sidewalk. So uh, they also identified different things about like snow removal, things that we wouldn't have normally thought of, but uh, the facilities department did and, and so they worked really well to identify a location and a type of tree um, that will be nice and you know will we'll be able to be there for a long time and won't be you know damaged by snow removal or have to be trimmed to be cut back from the school so uh, this this group is really well prepared and and they worked collaboratively and really appreciate the work of the facilities department uh, making sure that, that they worked with that group as well so we're excited about this very good and the um, subcommittee members are coming to you tonight with a recommendation that the full committee does approve this request. It conforms with all the requirements of our memorial policy, and um, we, we all agreed that this is a nice way to remember Mrs. Pantapas. So I would like to make a motion um, that the request of the uh, South School 
South Memorial School Sunshine Committee be approved and that uh, memor an appropriate memorial consisting of a flowering tree be allowed to be placed at the South School in honor of Mrs. Joanne Pentecost. So moved. Second. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Dunn. You've heard the motion. Uh, that motion was seconded by Mr. Amico. Roll call vote, please, on the motion. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Griffin Dunn? Yes. And Mr. Onotis? Yes. Terrific. That's Thank a wonderful you. gesture. Um, okay. Parent and student advisory boards? This is done. Nothing to report tonight. Okay. Building and grounds? Mr. Oh. Hockey? I don't have anything germane to that subcommittee, but if I can step in Ms. Carpenter's shoes, um, go back to finance quickly. Through you to Mr. Scanlon, um, typically around this time of year, we wind up with end of year reports or at least some sort of prospect as far as an end of the year report. Um, would you be able to provide that to us by our second meeting in June? Not exactly sure what the question was aimed at, but um, I can present some information for you for the next meeting. I'll get it to Josh. Maybe I'll be a, a little, I will be a little clearer. You know, typically we, we look at seeing what surpluses we have and what opportunities we have to prepay for items that we can prepay for, like special education tuitions mm -hmm. and things like that so that we can perhaps um, alleviate some of the obligations that we just voted on for the future budget and perhaps the other opportunities to do things. That's really what I'm looking to see. Understood. I, I think there's going to be enough of a challenge to get the year finished. We have talked about it. Josh has been interested in possibly prepaying for some SPED tuition over the summer. So we do have information on what we could pre-buy, but as of right now, I'm, I'm still struggling to get everything covered to close the year out. Yep. Nothing further report in <laughs> building your grounds. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, City Council and Legislative Delegation, Mr. Arnotis. Yes, I am aiming, ideally next week, I wanna check with folks' calendars because I think we actually have a little bit more flexibility with posting um, that meeting with the number of members are on it, but I know we wanna discuss uh, voting in the schools and using our buildings as we get into election season. So I think that is a reasonable discussion to have. So we'll be getting folks together to talk about that. Yes, it is. Thank you, Mr. Arnotis. Yes, if I may. Please, Mrs. Dunn. I would just like to ask that when you meet with your counterpart that you um, assure him that while the city council made the motion to utilize our schools, that the school committee maintains control of the buildings and that their wording was a little bit um, a little bit presumptuous they should have they should have requested rather than ordering I will put it in writing too you have that mr. notice <laughs> loud and clear I'm probably not the only one who has that either <laughs> okay uh, redistricting uh, subcommittee mr. Hockman yeah thank you we uh, have a meeting scheduled for June 24th June yes dr. Dodonald thank you June 21st thank you yes. uh, items uh, will be handled in the regular course of business for the next agenda. Our next school committee meeting, regular meeting is two weeks from today, and that'll be January, excuse me, June 21st, June 22nd, 2021. Uh, we'll be having a regular school committee meeting here at the uh, auditorium at the middle school. Uh, but also, as was referenced earlier by Mr. Hockman, we are meeting um, to present to the city council our school budget that we uh, voted on earlier today and I will be presenting to the city, city Council Thursday, June 17th, and I believe that meeting starts at 6.30. I uh, wanted to report that. Mr. Olympio, before we break. Oh, just uh, real quick, uh, nothing to report on the Special Education Parent Advisory Board. I'm sorry, Mr. Olympio, did I miss that one? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Okay. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Mayor. 
Yes, I'll I'd like turn to over. Did I miss, a, did I miss another report? I'm going to add to this. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn, but I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session um, to discuss the uh, a matter of personnel and with the intent to not to return to our regular school committee meeting. I've heard the motion by Mrs. Carpenter, seconded by Mr. Arnotis. All in favor? And uh, we will be playing that video as well. Um, I think that would be great uh, to get out to everybody. Um, and thank you, Dr. Lewis, for, for that work. Okay, move to adjourn. Thank you so much. <laughs>